All right, I hope you guys like scope comparisons because we have another one for you today. We're talking about the fairly new Strike Eagle Factor 25 by 56, and we're going to be comparing it to the older Viper PST Gen 2 Factor 25. When the Strike Eagle came out, it appeared to me that Vortex was sort of going to cannibalize their market because at least on paper, there is really no reason to get the PST over the Strike Eagle. The Strike Eagle on paper, based on its specs, almost looks like a Razer Gen 2 that's painted black with a slightly tighter magnification range. So some specs, just off the top, the Strike Eagle is, I think, an ounce lighter and, and shorter than the Gen 2 PST. One of the bigger features here is that the main tube is 34 millimeters and the objective is 56 as compared to a 30 millimeter main tube and a 50 millimeter main objective. In theory, what the larger tube does for you is two things. Gives you more adjustment, internal adjustment for elevation and it allows more light through the scope as compared to the smaller uh, PST. The drawback, in my opinion, to the larger tube and a budget optic is your options for mounting. 30 millimeter is pretty much a standard these days. There's plenty of quality, affordable options for mounting a 30 millimeter scope, like the Aero mount, for example. I was a little bit surprised to find that it not the case for 34 millimeter. I ended up going with Arcan rings. I'm not too worried about getting something very, very expensive, kind of high quality because this is going on a 1022. So I don't think recoil or anything like that is going to be a problem. So I think these should hold up. Speaking of price, I paid 550 for this Strike Eagle. I got it from uh, Liberty Optics, Scott over there. He has no idea who I am, but he does have some amazing prices on Vortex Optics and a few other brands. I would suggest you go check them out. These PSTs, they fluctuate, say eight to $900 typically. They do have a few reticle options on the PSTs. There are some which maybe have less illumination in the reticle and some other features in the reticle that you might not like or you might like. Some of them are cheaper as a result. The Strike Eagle only has the EBR7C reticle available in either MOA or Mills. And with the important thing to know with that reticle is that it is the same reticle that is available on the Razer Gen 2, the top of the line Vortex scope. I think that's pretty cool. The Vortex does not charge you an arm and a leg for their top of the line um, reticle. I think just for comparison's sake, again, um, Horus, I want to say charges $400 last I heard for a license to use one of their reticles. So just look at the Horus H59 uh, Gen 2 Razor and compare it to the EBR7C. Um, I have an H59 on the Bushnell scope and I can tell you um, it doesn't really do anything that the EBR7C does. So a lot of value there. Additionally, Vortex includes some nice things in the in the box with the Strike Eagle that are not included with the PST. They include this small tool that I did not know was in it. It is for the caps here. So you don't have to use a coin or a screwdriver or a bullet and mar up your cap like I did because this is plastic. And additionally, it includes a plastic throw lever in the box. Um, it is plastic, so it feels a little bit cheaper. I think it's plastic. Unlike the aluminum one that you buy separately from Vortex, I don't think you need a, a metal piece back there. The plastic one works just fine. Now, kind of getting into the differences of these two optics. The, usually you wouldn't talk about this that much, but the adjustment back here for the magnification is incredibly smooth. It's, I would say, light but it's just the perfect tension to make this an easy adjustment very quick. As you can see, less than 180 degrees. 
the PST is a little bit tighter and you can see it is 180 degrees. So this is very nice. Kind of sticking back here, you, and I guess through the whole scope, you do get you do get a bigger, wider field of view. And the easy one of the easiest way for me to show you that is just looking at the reticle um, and max, max magnification. You can see that you have two mils extra, a mil on each side in the reticle, um, and then you get a mil up and down extra. So it's two mil wider for the field of view, and it is something that you notice. Additionally, it feels like the bezel disappears a little bit more with the Strike Eagle, similar to a uh, one to six Razor. So a very nice feature. Getting into the glass quality, um, I did spend some time trying to get footage and pictures for you guys at the range. Unfortunately, I did not notice that there was, I think, some fingerprints and just some crap on the back of the PSC that gives you like a weird tint in the pictures. Try to ignore that as you look at them. I'll show them to you anyway. This thing has a lot of use on it. I don't know if I mentioned it. We have two of these PSCs. Um, they're both on precision, Ruger, Ruger Precisions, and they've both seen a lot of uh, competition and a lot of hard use, um, and they've held up great. That aside, when I was filming through this scope at 600 yards, and I was going from 5 to 25 power, I did notice that the camera got a little bit darker when I was approaching 25. It feels like at that point, the, the scope was letting less light in to the camera and it got dark. I did not experience it to the same extent with the Strike Eagle. I will annotate that if I was wrong after I reviewed the footage, but I'm pretty sure that was the case. So it seems that the larger body of the Strike Eagle is working. But then I went to my local forest preserve looked, um, looking for some deer. I found one about 125 yards away or so. I wanna say it was either right at sunset or a few minutes after when I snapped these two pictures. And when looking at these two, well, first of all, you can tell it's a deer in both pictures. You can see some details in both pictures. Um, it does seem that the PST has a slightly better image in that instance. Um, the deer was kind of in the trees, right, the tree line. But you're not, like I said, you're not mis misidentifying your target with either scope. And I think the reason why the image seems better with the PST than the Strike Eagle, even though this is a smaller body, is just coatings and glass quality. When you look at the Vortex website, they list a lot of features for both optics. And one thing that, that's missing on the Strike Eagle this mention of glass coatings. It says that the PST has an XR coating. I'm not sure what, what the XR is, but it does seem to make a difference. 
So at best, it's a tie between glass quality with the field of view going through the Strike Eagle. Now I think we need to talk about the turrets. So on the Strike Eagle, the, the parallax goes down to 15 yards. So the first time I looked at a target at 25 yards of max power, and it was actually clear because of the parallax, it's kind of cool how it looks. And this being 422, you need something that goes down low. The PST goes down to 25, so I would say that's also low enough for most 22 shooting. The illumination knob is on the outside like the PST. Um, the bad thing about the strength equals the illumination is it does not have an off feature or an off setting in between each setting. So you either get zero, one, or 11. And then if you wanna to go to like six, you have to find it and get to it. So you can't have your favorite setting just one click away the way you can on the, on the PST. So again, it's a small difference, but it's definitely a nicer adjustment here on the PST. Going to the turrets, I wouldn't judge how these feel because these have been used a lot and they're a little softer. When you look at the Windage, which has not been used that much, it's, it's much, much, much nicer. Very tactile, and the whole turret goes up as you dial an elevation so you know which revolution you're on. These are 10 mil per, per rev. Zero stop is very nice and, um, and firm. This one's set about a mil and a half under zero, just in case. Turrets are, are very, very nice. Here, on paper, these seem better. They are locking both windage and elevation. I would say, in my experience, I do like a locking windage turret just because I'm never really dialing windage when I'm shooting. I zero my, my scope to my rifle. If it's half a mil or a mil, I'll just leave it, lock it, and I just not worry about it. On the elevation, I'm always adjusting it between each stage or each position or each day. So this being locking is not that much of a, of a benefit to me, but, but, but it is something. The problem is, well, there are two, three. The zero stop, if you wanna use it, will limit how much rotation your scope will give you. It's similar to my one to four knife force in that it limits you to, I wanna say, I don't have the zero stop in here, but it limits you, I think, to one full revolution, maybe two, I'll annotate that part. Don't remember off the top of my head. Um, so you don't get that, the benefit of the huge tube and all the adjustment, like I mentioned, 30 versus 20 mils of adjustment within the scope, if you choose to use a zero stop. It could be an issue depending on how your rifle is zero, it could not. It's Again, that, that's something that shows you that this optic is cheaper. If you noticed, as I go up, you do not get this turret moving up and down telling you which revolution you're on. So you have to go back, hit your zero stop, and then you know where you're at. Here it's a little bit easier. And then the last, and definitely the worst part of this turret is just how sloppy it is.
if you ever wonder what mushy means this will be it it just does not stop moving even when you're in a detent or you think you are you just keep slowly moving if you can hear and see how much slob there is in this thing and this is tight and I did reach out to Vortex sending them a video of this scope and me doing this and they said that that is within their spec and that it's normal. I've never had a scope and I've had some cheap scopes that is as sloppy as that and you might not think that's a problem but uh, but if you're you know if you're cold let's say in the winter you don't have gloves or you, and you're trying to just dial in something fine there's enough slop in here and they'll stay sometimes one to one side or the other that you're gonna, going to have trouble dialing in something very specific. Now, I'm not a 0.1 mil shooter, but I'm not a 0.1 mil shooter and I do not want to be distracted by trying to dial in the proper uh, firing solution and then being confused if I actually did it or not. This just should not be that bad turrets should not make noise this much noise when you're just playing with them um i mean this is not going to be any sort of serious use but i will use it in competition and all 22 and at my skill level i just do not need more things messing with me more things trying to distract me from what i'm trying to do and for me a lot of a lot of things on the scope are either pass or fail, like glass quality, parallax, the reticle, and turrets too. And I think these for me, they fail. This is just way too sloppy. Um, I have a Bushnell HDMR2 and I thought that was sloppy, um, but this is just another level. For comparison, here is a very well used Bushnell HDMR2. Elevation is not locking. A little bit of slop, less than the Strike Eagle, but still annoying. And again, this is very well used. This is locking. Just another example of a locking turret. And there is no slop. There is a little bit, but you can't hear it. It's not nearly as bad. as a strike eagle. It's not enough to the point where I'm not gonna use it or where I'm gonna sell it immediately, but it is something that if the right opportunity comes along, I will get rid of it. And if someone offered me a, even a very well-used Gen 2 PSD uh, for this, I would make that trade in a heartbeat. I think this is a, just, it's a proven for us, like I said, we have two. It's a proven optic for us. The turrets are much nicer and the glass quality and everything else is just, it's adequate and it's the same as this. So just, there is nothing on this scope besides the field of view, which is, I'm never shooting at the edges of a, of the reticle anyway, that this optic gives me that this, this one doesn't have. Um, but the turrets are just, I know I'm ranting about the turrets, but the turrets are just so bad that it, for me, it's, it's a non-recommend. Unless you're shooting in just like a kind of lazy plinker, um, then sure, you probably will notice. The reticle is great, you can use just the reticle and ignore the turrets. But if you're going to be dialing them in any sort of pressure situation, they might come back and bite you in the ass. That's my two cents. Um, please tell me if I'm wrong or if you guys disagree. Um, the help is the algorithm either way. Thanks for tuning in.